minimum, uh, more of an extension of the solar minimum. Right now we should be getting into more of a maximum type of, of activity with the sun, and that's not occurring. Can, can you speak to that as far as what's going on with the sun and what could, sure. uh, what could happen or what's, uh, I don't know, just give a general idea because it's, it's kind of confusing. And it yeah, would be well, great to have a little there, clarity there on that. There are a lot of solar scientists that are interested and, and concerned about what's going on with the sun. And we, uh, NASA has la launched several probes, and one, uh, the SDO3D, which is really giving us some amazing new data. And we're, we're starting to look at the sun, like, right down on the neighborhood. And we're getting a good view of what the currents are and what the gravitational and magnetic currents are on the sun, what the jet stream looks like on the sun. And you're absolutely right. We are not seeing the sunspots that we were supposed to see. And this solar cycle, solar cycle 24, started way late. Uh, a solar cycle begins when reverse polarity uh, sunspots show up in high latitudes, not around the equator, but up near the poles. And that's what we're starting to see this year. But they're few and far between, and only a couple of them showed any propensity toward any B-class or M-class flares. We have seen nothing even close to X-class flares out of this solar cycle, not like we did with the last one, where we had nine X-class flares in one month. That, right. that was phenomenal. Um, the, the interesting thing about the solar minimum is the solar wind has dropped to such low levels, just barely above 300 kilometers per second, that the galactic wind is now distorting the heliosphere. The heliosphere is a sort of a soap bubble that's formed around the solar system from the solar wind going out in all directions. But the wind has died down to the point that now it's distorting. It's being stretched out like a bullet instead of round like a ball. And we're starting to see protons arrive in our atmosphere, creating cosmic rays that aren't from this neighborhood. They never got here before. They were always blocked out or canceled out by the solar wind. They are now entering our atmosphere, and those cosmic rays are creating a brand new, never, well, I say ne not seen in 25,000 years, set of energies and frequencies that human DNA has not been exposed to for 25,000 years. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> that's, always, that's always comforting, you know, to have uh, more manipulation of our DNA on top well, of everything. Well, it could be a good thing. It could oh, be a okay. Thing. Well, um, the, I guess the question that I have then is, do you think that, much like a hurricane, before the, a hurricane comes, you typically see calm seas? And then the hurricane hits and wham, there it goes, and you have destruction. Would you kind of say that this, is, uh, this could be the same calm before the storm um, with the sun, much like a hurricane? It, it could be. You know, the interesting thing about this is that there have been generations in the past that have been through this, and they left a record for us. Now, they left it in the best way that they could, in stone something earthquakes and fires and floods and, and high winds and sandstorms and wars couldn't erase. They left us messages. Now, the real interesting thing about this is I'm not sure we would leave a message for ourselves 1,500 years in the future, but they did, and that's powerful. It's extremely powerful. What kind of messages did they, did they, uh, did they leave for us? Well... If you, if you go back to, uh, say, uh, 500 A.D., which is about when the Mayans were at their zenith, mm -hmm. uh, most of the cities, uh, pre-classic and classic Mayan uh, cities were built during this period. And they were built with specific stellar alignments. And they were built with such precision that, that it just blows our minds every time we hack through the jungle and find something that these people put together. They weren't remote Indians living in the middle of the jungle. That's not what that area looked like in those days. They designed such incredible alignments with certain stars, like Sirius, that they were trying to tell us there's a day that all this lines up and you need to be prepared to, for instance, stay away from the coasts 
and you need to stockpile some food, and you need to be prepared for two or three weeks of 300-mile-an-hour winds, and they're, they're trying to leave us these messages in stone. And we're reading them in the museums and then going home and, you know, watching History Channel and not worrying about it. Dr. Agno, uh, the, the, the black hole in the middle of the galaxy and the sun are connected through electromagnetism. The center of the Earth has an iron core and thus generates a magnetic field around the Earth protecting us from the solar rays. Uh, when we cross this barrier or the, the, the black rift, and uh, that will essentially uh, make the iron core inside the earth slosh around. Do you see or foresee uh, a sort of a, a, a liquefaction effect taking place on the, on the solid surface of the earth as well as the oceans sloshing around in 700 foot tidal waves or was, do you see something that's going to be a gradual thing? Uh, that, that's a good question too. The center of the earth we're, we're pretty sure based on spectrographic data and resonance data that we've been getting the last year that the core is a single iron crystal, somewhere around 14 and a half grams per cubic centimeter. That's about five times as dense as the surface of the Earth. That uh, body is probably rotating faster than the crust because of conservation of momentum. The crust has expanded probably three times the diameter of the original Earth, so it should be rotating about one-third its original speed. So the core of the Earth is rotating approximately three times faster than the crust, which is why we have such a powerful magnetosphere. Now, that being said, the Coriolis effect we're seeing now, we're seeing a wobble in our pole of the Earth, and there is a risk of a pole shift. Uh, the sun goes through a pole shift approximately every 22 years. The Earth probably hasn't gone through a pole shift in perhaps 10,000 years. It, it could occur. Now, that's not going to be completely cataclysmic to the Earth. It'll change the jet stream. It'll cause tidal waves. But the crust of the Earth being eight, eight to 900, maybe 1,000 miles thick is, is pretty tough. And it's, it's pretty hard to make it undulate as a total crust. Will we see upheavals, overthrust, like we see in Wyoming and we see in the Andes? Yes, we will. Will we see 700-foot 700 700 tidal waves? Yes, and we'll see 1,200 and 1,500-foot tidal waves. Right now, we're experiencing a phenomenon we call rogue waves. Used to be we saw them once every three months, once every two and a half months out at sea. Now, maritime reports are coming in saying rogue waves are showing up about every 20 days. Right now, they're going parallel to the coast. If they begin to turn toward the coast, perpendicular to the coasts, you will see these subsonic waves traveling at between 400 and 500 miles an hour come into shallow water. That is, they're coming in from 20,000 and 15,000 foot deep waters into 500 foot waters. And when that happens, they will push up those tidal waves and they will be, they'll come to shore somewhere between 200 and 400 miles an hour. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty daunting, I guess you could say. But um, how do you think? I mean, I've heard many theories, and I don't. I, I, I kind of don't know how to take it. And I'd like your perspective on it. Um, we're talking. People have said that the last uh, pole shift. Uh, we're talking continents sinking into the ocean, new ones rising up. Uh, do you see it to, to be that cataclysmic? Uh, let me say this: Could it be that cataclysmic? Well, it, it could be. You know, our, our, the youngest sea, or the oldest seafloor that we've got out there that we've sampled is about 70 million years old. Mm -hmm. That's a baby compared to the age of the Earth. The age of the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. The difference in age is so staggering that it leads you to believe that the surface uh, of the, the bottom of the ocean has had either a complete reset or it didn't exist. 70 million or 100 million years ago, that the seafloor actually formed by the crust 
cracking open and filling in with molten material. We also see 